Have you ever had a great idea that would solve a real problem for your target audience, but when you tried to put it into a well-researched video like this one, you ended up quitting because you just felt so overwhelmed? Well, if that's happened to you, you're not alone. I found a way to use ChatGPT to solve this exact problem, and I know that it works because I've used that approach to create this very video, and I'm gonna share this approach in this video. If we haven't met before, I'm Ash Roy, a CPA and an MBA from the leading business school here in Australia. And I love helping service-based business owners to grow their businesses using digital marketing strategies that actually work. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos that we'll be releasing to help you with your business. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use ChatGPT as a thinking partner and a brainstorming partner to convert fuzzy ideas into clear, structured content in a way that feels authentic, human, and actionable. I think the real problem is that people don't struggle with ideas. They struggle with shaping those ideas into something useful, such as a LinkedIn post or a YouTube video like this one. They struggle with turning that unclear idea, taking it through the messy middle, developing it into something meaningful and get lost on the way. You see, most ideas need to be distilled, developed by cross-fertilizing them across other ideas in different fields. They need to be researched, verified, and then crystallized and presented as a cohesive solution that solves a specific problem. My biggest shift happened when I realized that ChatGPT was something I could use as a brainstorming partner to achieve all these things and more. When I stopped using ChatGPT as a shortcut and I started using it as a collaborator and a brainstorming tool to come up with ideas that I verified using my own knowledge, my skills and my experience, I found it to be an absolute game changer. Today, I asked ChatGPT to think with me, not for me. I often push back on its suggestions. I feed it better context. I do scenario analysis, which we'll be talking about soon. I extrapolate different scenarios to come up with different projections to see what certain ideas will look like two years hence. And then I form my opinions, verified opinions. That's where the magic happens. Now I've created my own custom chat GPT based on my own podcast transcripts, my own writing style and previous documents that I have authored including presentations that I've done. Sometimes I even upload screenshots because ChatGPT can actually read those screenshots too. And this is essentially like having an analyst who also happens to have a photographic memory and knows everything and remembers everything about my business and can help me in real time. So I'm gonna show you how I've set up my custom GPT in ChatGPT. So here we have our screen. So I just go to explore GPTs here and then I click on create and I can name my GPT, Ashes Documents and Speaking Style. And I'll describe this. I'll say this is a collection of presentations and other documents that inform chat GPT about my specific business and how I write and talk. This GPT is designed to help me brainstorm, but should not plagiarize, plagiarize any quotes or information directly. All these documents to be used as inputs only. Okay, and then I will go in here and I will upload various documents where I have spoken at various events. I'll go to my public speaking folder. I'll upload a document where I presented at the Australian Marketing Institute, for example, and I will upload a document where I spoke at IBM. I'll upload another one I spoke at a place called Macquarie Bank. Once I've uploaded all these documents, I click on create and I'll just keep this for myself and I click on update and there it is, my documents and my speaking style. And so I go back to my panel here and here I see Ash's documents and speaking style. There's my custom GPT done. ChatGPT can read all this information. ChatGPT can also actually, as of 
Today, the 3rd of April 2025, connect to your Google Drive and even read the contents of your Google Drive. It can be a very powerful tool provided you stay in control. Okay. Now let's talk about how I actually use ChatGPT. There are four main ways in which I use it. The first one is for brainstorming ideas. I use it to create a fledgling of an idea, take it through the messy middle, do the brainstorming, develop the idea, cross fertilize it as I discussed before, look at it from different perspectives, apply frameworks that I have created or I've come across, such as those I've just uploaded into my custom GPT. Now, when it comes to brainstorming ideas, I think it's very important to point out that I use ChatGPT to explore my own ideas and maybe other people's ideas, but to cross fertilize them, not to reproduce them. I don't use ChatGPT as an information source as much as I use it as a brainstorming partner. It's like having an analyst, much like I used to be about a decade ago, with Einstein's IQ and a photographic memory, who works as fast as 10 analysts put together. It's pretty incredible, all for $20 a month. I recently asked ChatGPT to look at my YouTube earnings and said, tell me what I'll be earning on a weekly basis 24 months down the track. And it looked at the number of videos in my channel and looked at how much each video was earning, added a compounding effect and gave me a number. And then I said, okay, now assume that I produce twice as many videos every week. What would my earnings be then? I already knew that the increase wasn't going to be just linear because of the compounding effect. And sure enough, ChatGPT came back to me with an answer that was exponentially higher, which I expected. But what was really valuable was it actually gave me the number. Now the number is not going to be 100% accurate, but it was something that I would have taken about three or four hours to figure out by tweaking assumptions and putting it into an Excel spreadsheet and all that sort of stuff. So this is a great example of where ChatGPT modeled a certain scenario for me and then compared it to another scenario in seconds, something that would have taken me hours. The second thing I use ChatGPT for is structuring narratives. Once I have a core idea, I ask ChatGPT to shape it into an outline, an intro, key points, and transitions, much like I've done for this very video. But then I read through what it gives me. I actually print it out and I read through it like this. I highlight bits of it. I cancel bits of it. I develop the ideas. I go through it. I make notes on it. I scribble all over it and I come up with a deeper, newer, more profound understanding. The act of reading through what I've printed out, scratching bits out, highlighting bits, is a game changer for me. The third thing I use it for is targeted research. So I often ask ChatGPT to research ideas that I want to explore further. For example, I might ask it to research what proportion of YouTube viewers watch YouTube on their television screens because that might inform how I produce my videos and what kind of font I might use. I might ask ChatGPT what proportion of people are actually using ChatGPT as a brainstorming partner as opposed to just an information source. This might help me to understand how many of these people actually would benefit from a video like this where I'm talking about using ChatGPT as a brainstorming partner. You get the idea. And the fourth thing I use ChatGPT for is to deepen my insight. I often paste transcripts from interviews with thought leaders like Seth Godin or Guy Kawasaki and ask, what's the deeper insight here? I might also ask ChatGPT to look through transcripts and find me a portion of a conversation where I spoke to a guest on that particular topic. For example, I spoke to Guy Kawasaki about artificial intelligence and I used ChatGPT to look at the transcript Find me the portion where Guy talked about AI or artificial intelligence, and I'm going to share that section with you right now. I have to say, I love AI. I think AI is the biggest deal I have ever encountered in my career. A quick note, you can do this also using tools like Descript, and you can actually edit your videos using Descript. If you're interested in learning more about how to do that, just post that in the comments below, and I'll be happy to create a video for you. By the way, I'll also link to the conversation with Guy Kawasaki in full in the description below. You can also check out my playlist, which covers the conversation with Guy, this video and other videos related to artificial intelligence and marketing. We'll link to that playlist in the description and also some area on the screen. 
So in closing, I would like to say that using artificial intelligence in ChatGPT in marketing isn't about replacing creativity. It's about removing the friction that stops you from developing and sharing your ideas more clearly. Ideas that really serve your audience and create actionable insights. When you use ChatGPT and artificial intelligence as a thought partner, not as a crutch, it becomes a superpower. If this helped you, I recommend creating your own custom GPT and giving that feature a try. Let me know in the comments how you go with that and how you're using AI in your workflow. Now, if you want some more real world, non hype content about artificial intelligence and marketing, ask me what you'd like to see in future videos by posting that in the comments and I'll do my best to create something for you. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on future videos that will help you to grow your business using long-term strategies that actually work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now.